Yes. Good morning, Dr. Sish. Good How morning, sir. Very good morning. Uh, dear participants, uh, now here we have with us Naseeb Singh Gill, Professor. He is from MD University, Rotak. Uh, Dr. P. Himachakati is going to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Naseeb Gill, sir. So we all welcome you, sir. Uh, I, I request Dr. P. Himachakati to introduce, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, my dear participants. I am um, Dr. P. Himajagati, Professor in Department of Management. It's an immense pleasure to introduce Professor Nasib Singh Gill. Uh, Professor Nasib Singh Gill is a senior most professor in the Department of Computer Science and Applications, MD University, Rotak. He is having 30 plus years of overall experience and working since the inception of the department in February 1990. He is also working as the director of Digital Learning Center, MD University, Rotak. Sir held several major positions in past, including nine years as head of the department for three terms, director, University Computer Center from 2010 to 2012, Director, Directorate of Distance Education from 2005 to 2007 and 2012 to 2015. Uh, Director, MDU Alumni 2011 to 2016. Director, Public Relations from 2007 to 2008. Professor Gill earned his postdoctoral research from Brunel University, West London, UK. He is a recipient of Commonwealth Fellowship Award of British Government for the year 2001. He has also received West Paper Award by Computer Society of India. Professor Gill recently earned leadership skills at Cambridge University UK and IIT Kharagpur during May-June 2019 as a part of LEAP, which is Leadership for Academicians program, a flag flagship program of MHRD Government of India. He has widely traveled abroad for several academic and research assignments, including the countries like UK, USA, France, etc. He has published more than 285 research papers and authored five popular books. He has immensely contributed towards the development of 13 MOOCs, Swayam, Arpit, course modules. As a resource person of the today's session, Professor Gill is going to enlighten the participants on the topic data analytics and 21st century intelligence space. Sir, hearty welcome to this session. Kindly take over this session, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot for introducing me uh, so uh, nicely to all the learned participants on board. First of all, I'd like to thank the director Aurora Spacey College, the entire team, organizing team of uh, Atal FTP on technology management using business intelligence and uh, data analytics and all dear learned participants rather i am indeed blessed to be part of uh, this uh, august and learned gathering on the Azure platform also i would like to congratulate the institute, the college to host 
such a relevant and timely FDP on a very appropriate theme. And what exactly is happening around? It certainly increases us and adds to the lifestyle of an individual. Friends, since we all are working in the education domain, so first of all, I'd like to just apprise you all how the digital transformation are taking place in higher education and what is the entire landscape of higher education in India. If you are talking about, there are about uh, 958 universities in the Republic of India and there are about 129 institutions of national importance and there are about uh, 52,650 colleges across the country which are catering to the needs of our education and uh, about 35.7 million students are pursuing higher education in India and digital transformation these have uh, revamped the entire landscape whether it's your education or it may be different walks of life so uh, when I was just looking at the schedule, I was also amazed to learn that there are many other learned resource persons who would also be enlightening all uh, the learned cliques on different aspects of your technology management. So I have uh, very humbly and uh, with a humility I just planned that uh, what I'm just going to share all my with all my fellow colleagues on board. That's why I've just planned what uh, share uh, what it was shared uh, to all of you. Let me also share my screen. Friends, this is uh, uh, the theme of my discussion and my delivery. Data analytics and 21st century intelligence space. Now simply tell me, may we afford to overlook what digital transformation are taking place in the cyberspace across the globe? And how our uh, industry is uh, orienting or revamping or transforming all its processes. I'm just uh, reminding you one thing that unless we keep pace in tune with our changing requirements, I think uh, we may not progress well. We may not certainly not be innovative at all. And as well said by the great motivator, our former president of India, APJ Abdul Kalam, that if you are referring how your knowledge, how this innovation, how our thinking process, if it can be aligned together, it reminds me of one of the very famous quotes. Our learning leads to creativity. Creativity brings us a platform for thinking. Thinking process leads ultimately to the knowledge and knowledge makes us great. And education is a manifestation of perfection within us. It was very important motivation 
by Swami Vivekananda. So if you are referring, there was a time people used to say and also used to realize that your IT, it was playing a catalytic role in any growth on any dimension in the name of national development. But friends, you would appreciate the very fact across the globe that now it has become a driving force and it has revolutionized the entire industry. This is the third decade of this 21st century. And if you do talk, what we are witnessing, even during the hard times of our COVID-19 crisis, nobody had ever imagined and thought of that COVID-19 crisis will subject all of us to such a kind of learning space, such a kind of learning technologies. In your education segment, everybody talks of what? Our very new experiences of learning. And people have set their processes accordingly. I'm not advocating and uh, favoring uh, much or exclusively our online learning. But yes, even as per the new education policy, 20% of the credits may be earned through our online programs, online courses, which as per your specific requirement, if they are quite helpful to an individual. Now with this entire background of our higher education, I am simply sharing with you friends, as per IEEE statistics in the initial phases of the year 2020, prior our COVID-19 crisis in Jan Feb 2020, it was all projected by IEEE. That is the fourth industrial revolution has not yet started. It's not, it's only just started now. But rather, it is existing for the last couple of years. But the kind of momentum, the fourth industrial revolution has attained today. It is uh, only because of several pioneer technology that the world is experiences and is uh, a beneficiary of. If you are referring to all, this is a particular industrial revolution 4.0 that has led to evolve a huge cyber physical space and cyber physical systems. It is not the area over this alone only computing. At every point, a huge chunk of data is generated. It could be disseminated. It could be modeled. It could be deployed. It could be helping decision making. So whatever the different sub themes you have scheduled as a part of this uh, Atal Faculty Development Program on technology management through business intelligence and data analytics. Friends, today, if you take a stock of these are the main four paradigms which have led to this huge transformation that has resulted into what about this huge landscape of massive acceptability across the globe and the main four dimensions to our digital transformation which have shown significant progress on that front and which are playing a pivotal role across all walks of life. These are your smack. That means social, 
transformation, mobile, analytics, and cloud. My fellow friends from technology and management, that they would appreciate that how society is engaged, how the clients and customers are, con are connected, how they collaborate, how the communities, communities are emerging, how crowdsourcing is going on. If you take a stock of today in the society, you will be amazed to learn that how social media is being used for different kinds of our decision making. Apart from that, it did not happen in a day. In a day, it took a lot of time. But yes, now the growth is not incremental. The growth is now exponential. If you talk about your, your mobile revolution, it has added value through our micro moments and collaborative innovations on the move that's going on. And that has expanded customer connect. All channel experiences, our augmented reality, these have all added a, I mean, good to its further momentum of this mobile revolution. Analytics. Now, unless our technologies converse and they help to take or arrive at a appropriate decision making or predictions, it will be of not much significance and relevance. Friends, when you are working on the data, and I'm not talking about your, our big data, I'm talking about a step beyond that is extreme data. So discovering value through different predictions and patterns, our analytics uh, has significantly driven to our intelligent space, to our uh, decision making, wherever you need, wherever you are located, you could be enjoying its fruit, you could be enjoying its momentum, you could be enjoying its outcome. And uh, at the top of all three, we have our good economics of cloud and cloud is adding to the business agility economies of the scale and that have expanded its horizon across the globe and that is leading to what our collaboration competitiveness and also cloud relieves us from the burden of what managing our appropriate our highest generation, your hardware, the software upkeeping, and the massive data generation that is being, I mean, shared, visualized, and it is being helping in arriving at decisions. So if you move further, just to keep you apprised I am sharing the very latest statistics which are revealed for the year 2021 in January. What is a digital around the world? If we are talking about out of this world population, 7.83 billion population we are having of the world today. 56.4% population is the urbanized. And if we are talking about 66.6% of the population, they are unique mobile phone users. And 59.5, about 60% of the population, they are using internet across the globe. And about 53.6% population, they are the active social media users. Now simply assume, again at the top, if you are talking about your Facebook and your YouTube. 
you can't imagine with how many users a minute they are engaged on Facebook and on YouTube. If you are talking about our uh, this internet users in context of India today, 503 million people they are using internet, and as far as overall number of users are concerned, we are next to China because in China it's approximate more than 800 million plus people that population. So when you're talking about 503 million, so that is not even 50% of the population, whereas globally, if you witness, this figure is about 60%. Now, let me share with you that how in social media, I mean, we are engaged. So out of total number of our this active social media users, which I just shared, that is 4.20 billion population. That is about 53.6%. Even within that, if you do talk, how many social media users as a percentage of the global population indicated 53.6? What was the annual change in the number of global social media users? Friends, it was 13.2% that increased in a year. Total number of social media users accessing via mobiles, these are 4.15 billion population. And the percentage of total social media, if you're talking about, it is 98.8% of. This is the real statistics of social media. Why I'm sharing all this fact? I certainly want each of you to realize and understand how the these kind of transformations have led to the present day intelligent space and how it is fueling the further growth in 21st century. I think uh, if you're talking about today, what are the latest trends in the name of our business intelligence? Friends, these are the main 10 business intelligence trends in 2021. Artificial intelligence, data security, data discovery, your software as a service business intelligence, collaborative business intelligence, data automation, predictive and prescriptive analytics tools, mobile business intelligence, embedded analytics, real time data and analytics. So, friends, now what exactly as the nucleus? of all this, it's nothing but it is the data. How the data has exposed and at what exactly the outpacing technology. I'm simply just trying to impress upon you that even within a span of even 10 to 15 years, how the data explosion has taken place. If you talk about it was in 2005, it was 0 0.1 gigabyte. In 2010, it was 1.2 gigabyte. In 2012, it was 2.8 gigabyte. In 2013, it was approximate 4.1 gigabyte. 2015, it was 8.5 gigabyte, and have a look at by the end of our 2020, it was 44 gigabyte spreads. If you are referring how this uh, growth of the digital universe could be understood, 4.4 trillion GB, that is your, your gigabyte. It has moved within a span of seven years to what? 44 trillion. That is 10 times. What the share of useful data on total? In 2013, it was 22%. It has moved on to what? 38, 7% of the share. 
data on the cloud, if you recollect in the year 2013, it was 20% on the cloud. Now look at the cloud usage and the architectures. It has moved on in synchronization with our user needs across the globe. Data on the cloud, it has doubled, that is 40%. Now, more and more importance is being put on or focused on your embedded system uses. From 2%, five times to 10%, that it has increased the data from the embedded systems that you are getting. And that is why well said how the data is generating. If you talk about friends, there has been a massive, unimaginable growth that has been witnessed. Do you know what is the hike in the mobile traffic in the last seven years? 222% is a mobile traffic that has gone up from 2013 to 2020 end. And how many mobile users have increased within a span of five years? 4.8 to 5.5 billion. If you are referring to how many mobile connections have increased? 7.9 billion in 2015, it has increased to 11.6 billion. And what about the speed today? Our 2015, it was 2 Mbps. It has gone to what? 6.5 Mbps. So it's not only our 5G technology. Even Airtel also has gone for what? Even with 6G experimentation and this trial. So that is the next, our 6G technology that will be moving with our higher speeds, higher bandwidth and that requirement for connectivity. How many videos, what is the video traffic? If you're talking about on mobile, 55% of the traffic in 2005, it has moved to what? 75% of the mobile videos. So friends, we could witness the entire growth. So it is all the statistics that I assume should be enough to impress upon the urgency of the data. And it was well said by Dave Copeland of Microsoft in 2016. Data is the fuel of our future. When you have lots of data, it changes things. And it was also well said by uh, Mukesh Ambani in 2019. Data is not only the oil, Data is a soil in the Indian context. So it's that important. AI is the new electricity. You know, our uh, Andrew Angie, who was earlier working with the Bedu in China, is right now working with the artificial intelligence wing of Google. Right? And uh, he is the head of that, our Google brain. And that is your, on the AI wing. And he has made a statement, AI is the new electricity friends. And AI alone, without data, will not be relevant and significant. And if you're talking about, that is why, data is the new oil and AI is the new electricity. This is how we have Risk to that status in the space today. And friends, with all this technological glimpse and the digital transformation, it has obviously moved the physical infrastructure to the digitalized world. And what it is having? It is based on our that huge connectivity, each and every minute concern, and even physical 
to cyber to social space and i'm deliberately sharing this slide as uh, your computer society of india computer society of the world i mean if you just look on the website this is the domain this is the glimpse this is a complete landscape that has been projected it is your iot enhanced user experience if you are talking about how our user awareness is being attended how our user engagement is focused how monitoring and analytics do take place and how performance and optimization are achieved if you are taking the different segments even you do talk how the buildings are being monitored how all the different things and the different spaces and objects are monitored and linked how data visualization and data analysis takes place how the sensors help to connect our different objects of the world how our rule and model based performance tracking could be achieved how predictive and prescriptive your analytics takes place because if you are looking at our what is the road map for the future if we align what exactly is needed by the society and what we are creating and what is yet to be created i think uh, it will be just raising uh, the requirement demand and then it comes the question of supply now who is beneficiary here the individuals the society and when you are talking about pre contemplation if you talk about our human computer interaction how your preparation takes place how personalization and public dashboards are attended how personalized usage and individual focus or different alerts and tasks are planned how performance feedback and rewards or it may help even the further maintenance and action thereof so friends what exactly is a physical space how that physical space as per the industry revolution 4.0 how it is turning into the cyber physical system and even cyber physical system not alone there are several other relevant uh, our spaces enterprise space your social space i'll be also sharing with you now what ultimately i mean all these could be worked for this all could be worked together to provide a intelligent workspace and that workspace is not only the only only very limited technology is a huge domain and huge landscape of the technologies will come to help all this and that's why remote care giving your security the security may be across the industry across our smart homes it may be the connected world that is a connected things or internet of everything it may be our different servicing segments by means of robots it may be controlling of different things or engaging different objects and your your different things it could be also managing or leading to what the environment control so here if you just uh, realize that uh, are not our this digital transformations with 360 degree assessment evaluation its creation and its uses has led to what 21st century intelligent space is not your data analytics your data mining your data warehousing your business intelligence are not helping to the emergence of this 
21st century intelligence space? Friends, yes, of course, yes. So we need to realize and understand even that relevance for that. If you do talk, the data, rather than saying from, where from the data is generated, you could be talking about uh, in the last around more than a decade, your all CCTVs, your video footage, your huge chunk of your data generation, your motion pictures, movies, images, right? Real time data it's generating. And how it is helping the society? If you do talk, friends, this is how our industrial revolution 4.0 has led to what? To drive to this cyber world. So physical world and this physical world by means of wireless sensor networks, mobile sensor networks, your interconnection of different objects and their monitoring, the data statistics and data harnessing, your data mining, data warehousing, all they are leading to what? Our different cyber social world. And it leads to what? Different set of actions, depending upon the different sets of knowledge gathered on the basis of the data statistics. If you do talk here, just if you witness these all, all the realities within our normal life setup, that what is a physical world, what is the cyber or digital world, how the data gets generated, how the data is analyzed, how the different apps and services do take place and how the decision making is right. Ultimately, then it ultimately goes this information or decision making to the executive for further steps to take. So that's why when you start analyzing the world, in terms of the material, the human resources, the environment, the machine, the interconnection. This is the complete physical world. How the physical world is just passing on the data to the cyberspace for what? For the decision making. This is how it has been represented here. So in a way, that is the ubiquity. That's why cyber physical cloud computing a new information platform, a new information platform to sense, collect, manage, analyze, visualize. This is what exactly is happening. That is why by means of the different smartphones and the different apps, how that exchange takes place, how the decision making takes place, how the real time data travels, how it goes in the real space. So this we need to grasp comprehend, understand. And if you're talking about just within a given setup of a particular building or a particular limited space, if you visualize, if you map, it may be you can say, come to map what uh, to control. So it means what you could be controlling within a building, it could be temperature, it could be light, it could be power control. When it comes to what? It comes to help and manage everything within a meeting room, boardroom. It could be also helping you even to track the space utilization, the energy saving, one card lift access possibility, and agile working and dust space management. It could also be leading to. So what works? Nothing but our data, data analytics works at the core of this. And how the data analytics works without data? Not feasible. So that is why this is a kind of our intelligence space that emerges only because of all what we emphasize previously. Friends, this is the third wave. Our this 
industrial revolution 4.0 has led to and that is what industrial internet so right now if you start comparing what were the earlier industrial waves it was wave one industrial revolution when machine and factories that power economies of scale and scope it moved to the second level that was internet revolution that is computing power and rise of distributed information networks it has been led to and today machine based analytics deep domain expertise automated predictive analytics that is leading to the boost of this industrial revolution 4.0 Friends, there was a time that we used to talk about three Vs of big data. But have a look at the 10, 10 Vs of the big data. It has added two. It's not only volume, velocity, variety. Then it moved to veracity. If you do talk, the big data is important. And what everybody expects of that is size of data voluminous huge shares size of data how do you maintain how do you engage the data how do you extract from the data how do you clean that different operations that you happen to perform velocity the speed at which the data is generated are we showing our readiness for that is also very important the kind of data that is generated you don't know I mean, from which kind of device? Because we are working with the heterogeneity, heterogeneous devices. And they could be varying in their different synchronization speeds and all. So variety, variety of the data that will also has to be dealt. Veracity, the accuracy that becomes that another important. And value of the data, which of the data out of this is very relevant and useful. That is also the fifth dimension. If you talk validity, how that data is significant now in the present context, that also need to be segregated. So that is why data quality, that's your governance master data management of, on massive, that should validate the data, which is which identifies the relevant data in that context. Another important variability. And that is very important in case of your data warehousing, the dynamic evolving behavior in data source that should also remain intact, should be very relevant too. At what point of time, which user, to what extent, even value also becomes important. That shows the distributed, your heterogeneity. And because data comes from our different multiple platforms that you have to deal and you have to manage. Vocabulary of the data, that in the form of what? In term, form of the modeling of the data, that is data models, semantics that describe data structure. So what adds to the overall definition of the data and its vocabulary of the data, that is your also very rightly and significantly needed and required. Vagueness. If you are getting a best out of the waste or something which is very vague, if you take the decision out of the vague data and that's the confusion over meaning of big data and tools used, but rather vagueness is also another ability of the big data that could lead to again a significant and relevant decision despite it was quite confusing. So friends, this is how our big data could be understood in terms of its V dimension, 10 Vs. This is the I mean, prediction of your future of data science that was pre-COVID, no doubt. Our COVID-19 crisis has given a break to some extent. But friends, you would also appreciate the kind of innovations which have taken place across the world during this COVID-19 crisis.
it has also added to the overall momentum and uh, if you recollect covid 19 crisis is not the first and it is also not going to be the last it has made us forcibly learn many things which we otherwise would which would not have sensitized or encouraged to join this kind of learning as we are doing today i am reminded of one of the instances uh, regarding uh, uh, our Isaac Newton, you know, Isaac Newton, he backed Nobel Prize for the principle of gravity. And you know, he he was a student of Cambridge University. I'm talking about the year 1665. So at the time, even Cambridge University was also closed down for a long time due to your bubonic plague. There was another kind of uh, similar uh, that's your uh, plague, kind of your massive, your disease. And during that lockdown, so our Albert Einstein deemed it, not Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton. He, he deemed that period of lockdown as a very productive period, as this was the time during which he could work from home. And he gave this innovation to the world for which he earned the Nobel Prize. So there are several new innovations to the credit of the people during this our COVID-19 crisis. But our, these were the statistics and this is uh, again what I will be showing that it will be again projected in the time to come. According to a survey conducted by IBM, in 2020, there will be an increase in job openings up to, have a look at 27 lakhs, 20,000 data scientists. So friends, this is how your, all our data science is important. So increase in data science roles, clearly defined scope of data science, creation of jobs. So have a look at how this huge data generation it has also got opportunities for the scientists to turn them as data scientists. So you can very well imagine. And the present forecasting in 2021, you may also just align how it is going to help. This was the cyber physical system, friends, that I just indicated. And out of this, uh, if you can identify which of this is the cyber and what are the others, physical. Have a look at which have been shown in the physical, this is a different uh, of a color, that is a physical space that indicate. At least in the blue color, that shows what this is your, our cyberspace. This is how they are different. Now, I, I talked about uh, cyberspace, your uh, physical systems, friends. Yes, apart from this, Fourth Industrial Revolution also has led to have some associated our other spaces to other uh, relevant systems too. That is a social system. It's an enterprise system. It is a biological system. So they, they are also relevant along with your physical system and cyber system. How social system matters your government, healthcare community, your education community, others, they are largely impacted of this kind of your cyber physical space creation. How enterprise systems are, I mean, helping, which also particularly is also the main theme of uh, our this uh, Atal FDP, the business model, the services, the processes, the operation models, right? And the talent management, that is also very important. So that also even cyber enterprise systems are linked. Apart from this, what exactly the biological system? Friends, if you do talk individually, you could be turning yourself a doctor of your own. Why? Because my entire respiratory 
my your neurons, my muscular figures, my all other clinical data pertaining to the individuals that also could be communicated and it will be just helping to build a biological system? Yes, friends. So that is the another criticality that you can't overlook. So cyber physical system, when it is on move, it is more enhancing. It is bringing enormous change in the entire layout of individual's life that we should not forget. And that's why we, we do start talking of what? Safety, health, sustainability, comfort, convenience, energy saving. Now, if you're just considering what are the different domains, what are the different technologies? I mean, every, uh, that's your January or February, IEEE selects their agenda. In the year 2020, these are the IEEE Computer Society highlighted or identified top 20 technology trends, the technology predictions. And what are those predictions? Trends. The specific predictions has led to the huge generation of the different literature, the different papers, the different research. And if you look at that indication, the IEEE Explorer. Fourth Industrial Revolution, which has fueled the society. So that may be on augmented reality, it may be on big data, it is your autonomous robots, it is 3D printing, it may be autonomous vehicles, it could be system integration, it could be cloud computing, it could be Internet of Things, it could be your cyber security and your augmented reality. That is something very relevant. I mean, that technological innovations which are taking place and which is leading to what our this intelligent space, the cyber physical system, we have to work in align with it. But at the same time, we should not forget, we should not forget safety, energy saving, convenience, comfort, sustainability and health. Yes, friends, along with that. And what were those uh, 12? Our technologies, let me share with you. Friends, these are the top 10 technology trends for 2020. Artificial intelligence at the edge. So I'm just indicating your edge computing. Non-volatile memory products, interfaces, because huge memory that you want beyond the flash memories. Digital twins, including cognitive twins, you know, Digital twins, uh, I'll also be uh, just uh, discussing in somewhat detail, that is solely works on what? The data analytics, on the data modeling, data visualization, practical delivery drones, additive manufacturing. So there are my several, our fellow colleagues from computer science and IT or management, I think these, this, these, this particular slide is very relevant from the research perspective because this is what exactly is being focused in terms of the research. Quantum computing by Google and by IBM, you are well aware. Our adversarial machine learning, your artificial intelligence and machine learning, cognitive skills for robots, our reliability and safety challenges for intelligent systems, yes, friends. Additive manufacturing by means of 3D and others, very relevant. So I'll be just uh, picking up only select technologies just to apprise you in the context of your theme of uh, our, this uh, FDP that I'll certainly share for that. But let me get you a feel of how our technology is being deployed in the physical space and how it is adding to the life or working of the individuals. This is where airports see within this environment how the technology plays an important role. You could be simply having different gadgets or different installations, different system functionality. That means direction and uh, directed list should be there, position relevant content uh, 
and advice including augment reality and what should be there workplace design real estate optimization see how the different actions are taken how the data is being captured how it is getting the individual personalized efforts personalized learning personalized information how these all things are taking place because if you are operating at the airports at the ports bus stations hospitals hotels conference venues stores shopping centers museums art galleries sports stadiums universities colleges what exactly you will be needing your different personalized information that you certainly would be expecting of how that is coming to your personalized devices how your your i mean actions are being communicated to the concerned stakeholders that you also have to understand and uh, if you just uh, believe me this is the only the single slide that will help you move ahead with your research landscape in your machine learning and that could be classified primarily in three kinds of learning supervised learning reinforcement learning and unsupervised which also could be further subclassified into clustering dimensionality reduction your regression classification which could also be further classified to individuals so what i'm just uh, trying to convey how things could be compartmentalized how things could be narrowed to down to the level where you can master your research and you can add to uh, the overall that's your enhancement or relevance of your research friends i need not to share much on to that but uh, i just simply by simple examples i'll try to try to impress upon what the difference between machine learning and deep learning here the kind of action that you are taking feature extraction and classification in machine learning how it has been put together that will be a concept of our this deep learning that goes together and more importantly if you talk about that what are the kind of you can say applications where deep learning is helping the society today your social network analysis your autonomous driving your natural language processing your sentiment classification entity extraction and translation it could be visual data processing action it be computer vision and multimedia and then data analysis domain specific to bio dimensions or disaster so what i have simply just uh, i mean plan to impress upon you these are the particular certain research domains which are significantly contributing to the intelligent space of 21st century this is the intelligent environment home that you could be talking about even if you have to identify the occupancy if for example you are interested to measure the temperature how the thermostat works how it's functioning is managed how the smog could be detected how the room occupancy could be identified how the windows status whether they are closed or open status is known which of the lights have should be lit depending upon their the physical presence around that area how the door entry and door lock could be identified friends yes what is intelligent space if you talk about the environment at home the environment in an office in the public space in a park on the road in the society how different objects and things behave that is very important what is a smart home what will make the home smart if security is full proof room or occupancy related action you may be able to take room temperature you can smartly control light and your other gadgets control you could be there your daily activity could be planned your heating and bed uses could also be accordingly decided and your conveyed is very important spot the difference what was there in the non intelligent and what is there in the intelligent it makes the difference how our physical space could be turned into a cyber space or intelligent space we need to spot the difference like this similarly when you refer home 
and smart home. What makes a home smart? There are many things that we could identify. It could be garage door opener. It could be there. You can manage that. What is the smart bathroom, your appliance? If you talk about your smart thermostat, it could be your, your appliance controls. It could be your energy management. It could be lighting control systems. It could be smart air conditioners. It could be security system. It could be your smart door lock. And maybe even inside the kitchen and other so many things or refrigerator all that could also be thought to be intelligent. Very important, I'm just going to share now in context of our country, smart city concept. How a city may become smart? Now what adds to the character of a city to be smart? That's very important. Friends, it is not only one, two, three, or four actions. We have to dream that how to pick up the different segments and how our this dimension could be added. Because energy, smart energy, water quality, smart parking, electric vehicle charging, waste management, smart street lights, smart home smart buildings, your electromagnetic emissions controlling, your air pollution controlling, your education should go or move, smart environment, intelligent shopping, traffic management, smart health, internet of things, public safety and many more. But how all these things, all these tasks would take place? We need to visualize the kind of technology. And you being our, I mean, a researcher and an academician need to know how things may improve, how that research could be geared up in that direction. I'm just sharing you the dream of government of India. In 2016, 20 smart cities were announced. But let me tell you, friends, mission has been pushed to 2023. And about 98 smart cities have been decided by government of India. And if you're talking about how our solar energy is going to fuel the smart city, Dew, Dew is the first small city with 100% solar energy. And you know what the solar power potential now? It is 37.63 gigawatt today. Solar power by 2020, what is expected? It is your 100 gigawatt, inclusive of 20 gigawatt rooftop. So largest state with solar power today is what Karnataka. And there are about 42 solar parks till now. So that is the real statistics that I'm sharing in context of smart cities. But what are the smart city indicators? Smart living, smart economy, smart PC. I just only identified several objects in that context. Apart from this, our internet of things enable smart city because our smart city will not be realized into reality without internet of things without data analytics without deployment of data mining data warehousing without sensors without identifying the relevant our physical structures and systems to be revamped to our cyber physical systems so here, all what the different multidisciplinary research or interdisciplinary research that is leading to the success of the different projects which have been directed to realize the dream of the smart city. Pertaining to pollution, smart parking, your parking Wi-Fi. See, it's not only one, two, three, but yes, yes, we start acquiring one domain in total and we keep on moving. How water management would go, how operation control would go, how public announcement would go, how 3D maps and interaction will help facilitate, how waste management is taken care of, how emergency systems move operate, how smart marketing could be taken up. 
how our digital signage are likely to function. See, friends, we need to, because all this would require a big boost in the name of your Internet of Things. And that is why well said, AI is the new electricity, data is the new oil. We should not forget. Even AI alone would not be able to do without our intelligent data with us. It's very important. And this is how your smart city, smart people, smart mobility, smart government, smart environment, smart economy. Yes, we need to. Our that partnership should go or move. How green buildings, how green energy, how green urban planning, because we also have to have what? There are so many different kind of problems that we also need to mitigate to lead to what a good smart environment. Smart living, what it should. It should be culturally vibrant and happy, safe and healthy life. How the smart mobility is a mixed modal access, clean and non-motorized options and integrated ICT should help drive the smart mobility. 21st century education, your personalized learning, your pedagogical innovations, your access to the resources, so inclusive society. That is your equality and equity. Embrace creativity is very important. So uh, I, I need to, to focus much onto that, but I'm simply trying to impress upon few more things. Data waves and data lake. There's a next step beyond your data warehouses, data lake. Friends, if you're talking about a lake, what's that? Things will be unstructured. Raw and unstructured data goes into a data lake. What do you do? Data is selected and organized as and when needed. Whereas when you are just comparing it with the warehouse, data is processed and organized into a single scheme before being put into the warehouse. Whereas content, it is not in the data lake. So the analysis is done on the clean data in the warehouse, where in case of a data lake, data is selected and organized as and when needed. So that is not exactly the same. So data lakes, this is how you can easily distinguish. That is your structured, semi-structured, unstructured, which is not yet have matured. Business professionals, it leads to data warehouse, business data scientists it would have. It is still maturing in terms of security. It is designed for low cost storage. That's your data lake. So there are different pros and cons. Our data warehouse is more mature on that front. Less agility, fixed configuration. This is what, how you can distinguish. For the benefits of data lake, democratize data get better quality data, support all data formats, scheme, schema flexibility, advanced analytics. So at the same time, there are cons of this as well, benefits that already while uh, comparing it with the data warehouse, you could notice. Friends, I'm just uh, to this next sharing, yes, one very important, uh, that is your technology trends digital twin. What is a digital twin? People do perceive it differently. Do they represent an asset in the physical world with a digital model? That is how our physical system is just turning into digital or cyber physical system. It's that attempt. So our digital twin is not just a data model. It must include relational interactions. Digital twin looks and feels like the real environment. It simulates models forward with varying degrees and fidelity. It connects with relevant time data to ensure the model mirrors reality. And I'm also talking about the digital twin concept when applied to a city. That is a digital twin. You know, there is a digital Singapore also. Digital Sing Singapore and Singapore. Our digital Singapore is twin of this physical Singapore. So that is a replica of that particular physical model. Similarly, Jaipur is also being tried as a digital Jaipur. So 
it's not only applicable only to the specific uh, polysmolar systems like uh, in case of your what distal twin in case of the aircraft how do you add it to the function how do you control different things that becomes quite easier so digital twins are more than the model no doubt it's the model of the thing but uniqueness each physical thing has to at least one unique twin it has is its identity status and context simulate the real world thing it rules prediction and algorithms provides as the oral analytics and it monitors by querying the state obtaining notification and twins can control the things they represent so this is something very important for digital twins you should know so these are the digital twin characteristics yes uh, i understand that uh, yes friends so with all this i am simply uh, just uh, going to conclude that yes if government of india is also planning something more in terms of technology then our technology innovations and more computing power addition that may also help to materialize the dream or to realize the dream for that and if i'm just referring our this uh, because uh, our uh, 2021 budget it was yesterday projected by government of india and there are complete analysis is going uh, again to be analyzed that may take a couple of weeks to conclude to come in the right form but i'm just uh, trying to show you what was the uh, budget 2020 so that was our 8000 crore national mission on quantum technologies and applications it was announced in the budget 2020 but also a large chunk has already gone into covid 19 but yes what exactly were the particular uh, uh, that's your massive plan as a part of that project cryptography medicinal materials machine learning and searching big data so if you look that's your out of this cryptography machine learning and your our big data that all very much relevant for the theme that you chose for our this faculty development i also again once again congratulate the organizers for uh, uh, choosing a very right appropriate theme and also all my uh, uh, esteemed fellow friends who are uh, with me now on digital platform with interaction with all these words uh, uh, i just uh, close my session I thank you all, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. I'm now open with the my open discussion in the name of any questions if you have or any discussion that you particularly are interested in. Let me close that. Then I'll just be with you. Yes. Thank you very much for giving me patient hearing. Now open to the questions. and queries yes friends dr stage dr himani the organizers yes yeah. sir yes sir we have a question from varalakshmi sir yeah tell me with the chat box i have a question Please ask the question. Sir, we have a question from Varalakshmi uh, Siram, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, sir is there any difference between data model and data twinning data model and data twin data twinning sir data mining data twinning sir mining twine sir data mining twine sir twine i i did not really get data model and the data twine sir fine data model and the data twine t w i n see may, may i just uh, i mean if somebody can write in the chat box i really did not uh, hear data model is fine very chat box yeah just a minute i'm just opening up the chat box uh other data twinning okay yes, right sir. all right right yes yes there's a big difference see uh twinning is nothing but uh, that is uh, a model of the physical space if i'm simply talking about i could be having my this particular pen this is your physical entity i could be creating it's a uh, a digital model for that what does it mean it means that any of its functionality i may be able to drive just by certain indicators or its functionality that i could add on with our its different clicks away to the digital model which on the physical in the real world is not possible i'm just uh, quoting an example if you talk about I, that's why i just quoted uh, an example digital singapore you know the singapore authority what they have done like the transportation system like the education departments like the water management all the different physical activities their entire controlling it's not only specific there but even through your very smart apps and smart modeling you can easily operate so digital twin is nothing but this is your a replica a replica of the physical system that you can operate easily you are not required to operate there and then into the physical system but this is aligning your soft button and your soft instructions you can control and manage that the difference is fine A any other question yes so we end up now if there are no questions i think uh... sir i think uh, like the participants they do not have any questions like you are very much clear in explaining the things so okay. thank you so much sir happy from uh, okay. happy to hear from you uh, um to to summing up uh, the the entire session the sir has highlighted the uh, digital trans uh, trans transformation right from the industrial revolution to internet revolution and industrial internet sir has also told about the 21st uh, data technologies highlighting the importance of data and he also highlighted the uh, certain technologies like ai data analytics machine learning deep learning internet on things data warehouse data uh, data lakes and digital twin thank you sir thank you for sharing your valuable information to all the participants with your evergreen smile oh, thank oh. you sir Thank, Thank you sir
Hey, thanks a lot for such a uh, I mean nice hearing to me, and uh, for the honor that you extended to me and our opportunity uh, to be with you all uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Don't uh, forget to share uh, the video link of the session. That sure. I have. Sure. Sir. Okay. Thanks a lot. If yeah, there are some uh, screenshots of uh, the session, if you can share with me, I'll see on my mobile. That will be great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Bye. Thank you, sir.